Yaskal Electric America's technical training services would like to welcome you to the Torque Control Overview Part B e-learning module. My name is Paul Anderson and I will be your instructor today as we go through this e-learning module. This e-learning module will show you how to set up Torque Control for an application using a Yaskawa F7 drive. For a review of Torque Control basic concepts, please take the e-learning module entitled Torque Control Overview. During this module, we will cover the three main parts for programming Torque Control. First, enabling Torque Control. Second, configuring a torque reference. And last, configuring a speed limit when in Torque Control mode. Once the system has been constructed, programming torque control on the drive is accomplished in three steps. First, torque control must be enabled in the drive. Second, the torque reference must be configured for operation. And last, a speed limit must be configured. In order to use torque control, the drive must be in flux vector control mode. Configuring the drive to be in flux vector control mode involves two steps. First, a PG feedback card must be installed and configured in the drive, and then the drive must be programmed to operate in flux vector control mode by setting the control mode, parameter A103, to flux vector. The D5 parameter group contains the torque control mode parameters. The first parameter, D501, is used to enable the drive to run in either speed or torque control mode. Note that the red box around setting 0 indicates that the parameter is factory set to this value. Enabling torque control is accomplished by setting D501 to setting 1. Setting this parameter puts the drive in full-time torque control mode. If the drive will be switching between speed and torque control, a digital input can be set to act as a toggle switch between the two control modes. Setting any one of the multifunction inputs to setting 71 causes the input to take on this function. In order for the digital input to have any effect, parameter D501 must be set for speed control, setting 0. The user can then toggle between speed and torque control modes. When toggling between the control modes, a delay time of up to one second can be added to prevent instantaneous switching. Parameter D506 can be set anywhere between 0 and 1000 milliseconds and is factory set for no delay. Now that torque control is enabled, a torque reference must be configured so the drive knows how much torque the motor should output. First, let's look at the analog inputs during speed control. The factory default settings for the analog inputs are shown above, where terminal A1 is the master reference. Configuring the drive for torque control changes the function of terminal A1 from master speed reference to the speed limit function, whereas terminals A2 and A3 retain the same functions when in speed control. Either terminal A2 or A3 must have its function changed so the terminal becomes the torque reference. Setting one of those terminals for torque reference is accomplished by setting the respective terminal function selection parameter to setting 13. If a 4 to 20 milliamp signal is to be used for the torque reference, terminal A2 must be used as the torque reference terminal. An important concept of torque control is torque reference polarity. Torque reference polarity dictates whether the motor torque will be in the same or opposite direction of motor rotation. In the diagram, the line direction arrow indicates the direction of the forward run command, meaning that when a forward run command is given, the motor is expected to rotate in the direction of the arrow. The unwind motor that we've discussed thus far is shown on the right, starting with reverse rotation. An example of the diagram on the left, starting with forward rotation, is a helper drive on a conveyor system. A long coal conveyor may require multiple drives to help in moving the load. Additional drives are set up in torque control mode and aid by providing additional force in the direction of the conveyor belt. The coal in this case is moving to the right, so that forward motor rotation is in the clockwise direction. The additional force from the motor is needed in the same direction as material flow so that motor torque is in the clockwise direction also. Because motor torque is in the same direction as forward motor operation, this is a positive torque reference example. The winder example that we've been using has the purpose of maintaining tension on a paper web. The web is moving off of the unwind roll in the direction of the rewind roll so that forward motor rotation is in the clockwise direction. 
The force from the motor is needed in the opposite direction as material flow to create tension, so that motor torque is in the counterclockwise direction. Because motor torque is in the opposite direction as forward motor rotation, this is a negative torque reference. Changing torque polarity is done with the digital input. Setting any one of the available multifunction digital inputs to setting 78 causes that digital input to switch torque polarity when activated. Note that torque direction is not dependent on the direction of the run command. For torque direction to be changed on an application, the reference polarity must be switched. Another method of changing torque reference polarity is by setting up the analog input being used for the torque reference as a negative 10 to plus 10 volt signal level. When the reference signal is between 0 and positive 10 volts, the torque reference will be in the same direction as the forward run command. Conversely, if the signal is between 0 and negative 10 volts, the torque reference will be in the opposite direction as the forward run command. Electrical noise or poor signal quality may cause an errant torque reference signal. Adding a filter to the torque reference will reduce the effect of fast signal variations. Parameter D502 can be configured to continuously filter the torque reference for time periods of up to one second. This does not mean that the torque reference will change only once per second, but that all of the values of the previous second will be averaged to filter out any spikes that may occur on the signal. The last task in setting up torque control is to configure the speed limit when in torque mode. First, the source of the speed limit must be determined. When in torque mode, the drive will allow the motor to operate between zero speed and the speed limit. The speed limit may either be a permanent value that can be programmed or a changing value depending on the application requirements. When the speed limit must be changed, parameter D503 should be set to zero. Doing so will use whatever reference source is programmed into parameter B101 as the source for the speed limit. The speed limit signal may come from the digital operator, analog inputs, built-in serial communication, or various option boards. If the application will use only one speed limit, set parameter D503 to setting 1 and set parameter D504 accordingly. When the speed limit selection parameter is set for the analog input, the drive will use the reference source programmed into parameter B101 as the speed limit source. Under factory default conditions, placing the drive in torque control mode will automatically change terminal A1 from the speed reference to the analog speed limit function. Parameter D504 is the value used as the speed limit when parameter D503, speed limit selection, is set to setting 1. The speed limit is programmed in percentage of the maximum frequency set in parameter E104. The polarity of the speed limit is used to indicate the direction of the speed limit. If the speed limit is positive, the speed limit is in the same direction as the run command and is in the opposite direction of the run command when the speed limit is negative. This completes setting up the speed limit and thus completes programming torque control in the F7. Thank you for attending this Yaskawa Electric America e-learning module. We greatly appreciate you taking the time to learn more about our products. If you would like additional training, please contact us through any of the methods above. Thanks again and have a great day.